first became aware of climate change um, as a serious proposition in the early 1990s. And working as a forester uh, and thinking that forestry was a good thing to do, which it is. And also then seeing a calculation that showed that if we wanted to uh, stabilize climate change with trees, we would need five planets the size of Earth covered in trees in order to offset the carbon that we're digging out the ground and pouring into the atmosphere with fossil fuels. Formation of Tresoc started ten years ago. I had been working with the Somerset County Council where I wrote the climate change strategy and could see that uh, government was not doing very much about this and that I, I wanted to do something. Transition Movement had organised a workshop on, uh, on climate change um, and what to do about it and I went along and said that I wanted to start a community owned renewable energy business. A group of us got together there um, and we worked on this for a, a year to work out first of all what we wanted to do and then how to go about it. And a year later we formed the Totnes Renewable Energy Society as an industrial and providence society whereby with that, uh, with that company structure everybody that invests in the company becomes a member or you become a member of the company by investing in the society. Every member has the same voting rights. You can't buy shares from anybody else. You can't build up your shareholding and take control of the company. You only have one vote no matter how many shares you own. And everybody gets the same rate of interest paid when we make a profit. We were very ambitious at the beginning and we need to be very ambitious um, and we realized that the best option, the best thing, single thing that we could do was to build a wind turbine, put up a wind farm because that is the way you get the most amount of renewable energy in this country for the least amount of money. It's the cheapest form of renewable energy we've got and probably now the cheapest form of new source of energy we've got in this country. It's easy to deploy, it's quick to deploy and at that time government policy stated that we wanted to have as much renewable energy as we could at the lowest unit cost which means onshore wind. But in the in the five years that it took us to get an agreement with the local landowner and an agreement with the wind developer and to prepare the planning application and do all the associated studies and put the planning application in, that took five years and in that time we had a change of government and a new policy that said we don't want wind turbines unless everybody agrees to. This doesn't seem to be the case with um, fracking by the way. We had over 300 members at that time uh, who'd invested over 160,000 in Tressel. And we didn't have much money left. So our losses were not so great as the losses of the wind developer. They, they reckon they spent about 400,000 on that planning application. But that was gone, lost, finished. And everybody that that put money into Tresoc, and that includes people that put £20 and people that put £20,000, everybody felt it personally because we'd all, you know, we'd all been fighting for this. And we, we talked to our members and, and asked them if they wanted us to carry on and if so, we needed them to stick with us, not take their money out, leave it in and we would, we would carry on and, and build up a solar portfolio. So, four years after that, we now have a solar, solar portfolio that's large enough to allow us to pay interest to our members. And we paid the first interest payment to members last year. We'll be paying another 
modest interest payment to members this year and with better prospects for the year ahead because as well as growing, continuing to grow the solar portfolio, we're also now working on projects for hydropower and anaerobic digestion and other renewable energy technologies. And I think we are now at a critical mass and people are beginning to see that they can put their money in here, it's safe, they can, they'll get a, a modest income out of it and they're doing something which is good and useful and, and they believe in and we can see the results locally. Really? Now we have, um, we have 550 members now. Um, we have as many supporters on our email list, so we're emailing over a thousand people. We've got a great team. You know, this is not something that can be done by any single individual. It's just beyond anybody's capability to do it on their own. And we have an, we have an amazing team of people in, in Tresor now. And, and the fact that we're not making very much money at all. After 10 years, I'm finally earning £350 a month. So it's not the way to get rich quick, but it is providing income for four families that are you know, supplementing the income of four families that are getting, uh, getting some form of return from Tresor. And in addition to that, our spending is 95% of that is with local businesses, so the money is retained within the local economy. I don't think that the way to approach it is to get government to change its mind. Um, because there you're up against people with much bigger budgets, better access, better training in that. You know, you, there are, there are um, in industries that write um, legislation for government now. And, and not just in America, here too, you know, they will, they will write legislation and say we think we should do this. And so that, that's, that's not really the most productive way. The most productive way, I think, is to, is to work in our local communities and see what can be done. You know, there's always something you can do, and I, I think you've just got to keep on with that. And also realise that you're not going to win every one. You can't win every battle, but you know you win one, you win another, and then you learn and you you keep going. But I I, I do feel now, finally after ten years, that, that Tresop is a it's a it's a fixture in the local economy. Now. That there are there are people that we do business with that uh, you know they they pay their wages out of the business that we put their way, whether it's solar or hydro or. Uh, whatever technology we're considering and um, yeah it, it feels more comfortable and I think uh, I, th I think it's the way to go people like it people want to put their money in and the situation now in the UK is that the demand for investment in community renewables is far far greater than the supply of community renewable energy projects so if you've got a viable project no matter what it is, no matter how big or small, if you've got a renewable energy project and you can make it pay, then go ahead. Well, peak oil is a, proved to be a bit of a, a nonsense, really, in, in the light of, of, uh, fossil, of, of tar sands. You know, the, the, so the. Um, I may be getting distracted here, I do tend to ramble and go off on different things, but the, the fact is that the oil industry thinks we've got all this oil in tar sands, in deep water drilling, hard to extract areas, and they'll go for that and the price will go up. And, and so that is why we have such a huge government clampdown on community renewables and renewables in general. They don't want this to succeed. The, pe the, the people in the fossil fuels do not want renewable energy to succeed. Why would they? You know, they, these are people who who will shut out any competition. In, in, just to take, in the UK's case, with um, retailing petrol, selling petrol, the oil majors may put such tight margins on the sale of petrol that no independence could survive. So they want, you know, they, they don't want any competition at all for energy. So renewables is completely not on their agenda.
And these are the people that have the most sway with our government. They do. And it's natural, really, because they provide the energy that we all use. You know, that's how we get about, that's how we keep our homes warm, that's how we make clothes out of plastic. So, you know, we, we all use it, we all need it. And it, you know, in, in that sense, it's right that governments should work closely with, with these companies to you know, make sure that we, we continue to have energy. But we've also got to get away from fossil fuels if we want to survive as a species. So what do you do? Really? At the moment, there are 250 uh, community energy organisations working with projects in the UK. And that number is growing. We could wish for uh, renewable energy policies similar to Scandinavia. We don't have it. You know, that's, <laughs> we have, well, we have the policies, but we don't have a government that's putting them in the appropriate action in place. We just don't. Um, I think, really, I, I think the most effective thing that we as individuals can do, and I do want to do something, and I'm not decrying those in, in, the, in, the, in government that are working towards this objective. We need, it would be great if government was with us. But right now, they're not. And so if you want to do something, start your own community energy company and then be prepared for a long, hard slog, loads of bitter disappointment and not much money, but you might get there in the end and the prize is worth it, I think. It feels better to be doing something, even if it is totally futile. Really? Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. There is no, there is no magic bullet, there is no you know, easy answer. And this solar power, it takes five years before that you pay back the energy that you make in a solar panel. With wind turbines, big wind turbine, it's paid back in three months. But there's no consensus on these figures, even though people have worked to put the numbers together. There's no agreement about this because you have a you know, deliberate mis misinformation. Really? <laughs> I think you've got to work that out for yourself. Really, I do. I, I, don't, I don't have any prescriptions. I just do what I do because it feels useful and I think if, you, if you've got something you can do that you think is useful, do that. Really?